Hi all, I am Fatima Tal Safna Zubair of first year BA Functional English. So far, my friend Malavika has discussed some of the topics of world of media. The remaining portions will be taken by me. My topics are Sinhua, International News Flow, Information Superhighway and Media Imperialism. So, let's move to our first topic, Xinhua. Xinhua or New China News Agency is the official state-run press agency of the Republic of China. It is the biggest in China as well as the largest news agency in the world in terms of correspondence worldwide. Xinhua operates more than 170 foreign bureaus worldwide. It owns more than 20 newspapers and a dozen magazines. It publishes in several languages including Chinese, English, German, Spanish, French, Russian, Portuguese, Arabic, Japanese and Korean. Now, other major international news agencies. First one is TAS. It is renamed as ITAR TAS, the Information Telegraph Agency of Russia. TAS was renamed in 1992 ITAR TAS when Russia proclaimed its sovereignty following the collapse of the USSR. It has retained its status of being Russia's central information agency. Second one is DPA, DOJ Press Agent. DPA is a German news agency mainly serving the German speaking regions. Third one, EFE. This is a Spanish news agency with its headquarters in Madrid. It has close links and influence in Latin America where Spanish is one of the major languages. Fourth one is Kyodo. Kyodo, it is the major news agency in Japan. Other major news agencies include the Islamic Republic News Agency of Iran, Agencia Nazionale Stampa Associata of Italy, Caribbean News Agency, Ghana News Agency, Interpress Services of South America, Middle East News Agency and the Pan-African News Agency of Senegal. Now, we shall discuss about our second topic, International News Flow. International News Flow, also referred as Global News Flow, is a field of study that deals with the news coverage of events in foreign countries. It describes and explains the flow of news from one country to another. For example, we know quite many things about US politics, political leaders, cinema, celebrities, major cities, multinational corporations, universities, tourist destinations, and so on. On the other hand, what is our knowledge of the many South American countries except for their achievements in football? Similarly, the news coverage of African and several Asian countries are so little in our media. These countries would hit the headlines only affected by major disasters, tragedies or violent overthrow of the existing governments. Now we'll move to our third topic that is information superhighway. The term information superhighway was introduced by Al Gore, former US Vice President in 1994. He stated that the information superhighway allow us to share information, to connect and to communicate as a global community. The Oxford English Dictionary defines the term as a route 
or network for the high speed transfer of information especially a proposed national fiber optic network or internet information superhighway can be simplified by an example imagine the traveling in a four lane express highway we can travel fast and even heavy vehicles can have trouble free traveling on the other hand think of traveling in the city roads of kochi kannur and calicut because of the narrow roads the vehicles can travel very slowly and heavy vehicles would face many difficulties to move ahead the availability of high speed internet software and other advanced equipment would enable a person send receive data images and videos in a few seconds just as the smooth and speedy ride in an express highway now we'll move to our last topic media imperialism media imperialism is a theory stating that smaller countries are losing their identity due to the force feeding of media from larger nations as the larger media corporations begin to take over smaller media companies are either being closed down or swallowed up media imperialism is not just an international phenomenon when large amounts of media output are produced by just a few or even one company then that too is considered media imperialism so sorry countries such as canada and italy are examples of this type of media imperialism large volumes of the media output in these two countries are controlled by just one company from the 1980s as multinational media corporations grew larger and more powerful many believed that it would become increasingly difficult for small local media outlets to survive many developing countries had to borrow media content from the most powerful countries or companies significant writers in this area include Ben Bagdikian, Noam Chomsky, Edward Herman and Robert McChesney. However, critics have responded that in most developing countries, the most popular television and radio programs are commonly locally produced. In the news gathering and distribution process, a few American, British and French multinational media corporations dominate the world these media organizations with their corporate and other vested interests can produce biased and colored reporting the american aggression of iraq and afghanistan us fight against terror after 9 by 11 have seen mostly a one sided reporting so to sum up let me recap my points that is First, we have discussed about Xinhua. Xinhua, or New China News Agency, is the official state-run press agency of the Republic of China. And then we move to our second topic, that is international news flow. That is, it is the flow of news from one country to another. Then we discussed about information superhighway. It was introduced by Al Gore, who was the former president. us vice president uh, he stated information superhighway as it allows us to share information to connect and to communicate as a global community then we finally discussed about media imperialism it is a theory stating that smaller countries are losing their identity due to the force feeding of media from larger nations so friends The remaining portions will be taken by my friend Suhaira Jabin. Thank you.